Right, we're rolling. On this podcast, we'll be talking about different areas of business and all things marketing. My name is Dave Doyle. And I'm Dave Alton. This is Social Antics, another marketing podcast. Howdy folks and welcome to Social Antics, another marketing podcast. I'm doing the intro this week because I took the piss out of Dave last week and he won't do it anymore. <laughs> you alright, bye? I'm not too bad. Traumatised. Absolutely traumatised. Took me a week to get over it. Did it? I did, yeah. That's grand, so. How did that? You've done it well though, in fairness. Well, oh, you must have been practising, I'd say. Well, I'm a professional communicator in my work, <laughs> so if I can't do that, I'm in big, big trouble, to be honest with you. It's a nice title to have. Professional communicator? Yeah. Well, that's the thing I do. I stand on a stage and shout at students shout <laughs> communicate, I'm, communicate. Going, I'm going to have to if they make me wear a mask next year well whilst lecturing so that's going to be interesting mm. did you have a good week did have a good weekend um was sunny enjoyed it um relaxing enough but uh busy, it's terrible when you don't have a pub busy week in work it's coming 7th june is coming. <laughs> you're one of those fellas now that has that you you know you pull down the day every 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 day on the calendar Absolutely. in the room is it yeah i love the pub i love going <laughs> to the pub i love spending time in the pub and i get to go back there kind of i think outdoors. this is the most we've talked or sorry this is the, one of the most topics we've talked about the whole way through the podcast obviously it's a very important part of my life and i would like to talk about it. passion and part absolutely passion right this like, week, like, if pe- like if people say oh to have, have you enjoyed lockdown no I haven't enjoyed lockdown you know why but because, I don't think anyone because, has because the pub yeah. is closed no but there's some people there saying oh do you know I, I found new hobbies and I learned how to cook and Not I exercise and I became a better version of myself I am a worse version of myself <laughs> because I can't go to the pub we'll check in next week will we yeah, next week now you might be have a point in yeah, and you'll be grand Oh we'll no, bring, we'll bring oh, points with us next oh, week. Oh no, you will be lucky if I <laughs> turn next up next week. week. <laughs> oh no, like like what like what day do we record on Tuesday? Tuesday? Oh, I'm booked. I'm 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 drinking on Tuesday. We're gonna find a new day. I'm saying no Tuesday. Actually, last week I think we kind of said again, right? We get back to doing a day, a particular day each week. It was kind of all over the place there for a while, but Tuesday. That's because you bought. That's because you bought little dogs. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this week we have a guest on. We do. A very lovely gentleman from Cork that we've worked with uh, on numerous occasions, Mr. Paul Wade, who has a serious amount of experience behind his name in terms of design, brand building, um, you know, and a whole mix of things in in that whole field. Um, really, really interesting guy. Um, I met him a couple of years ago because we went to college together, and we just kind of, you know, the three of us kind of been working on a couple of projects since then, really. No, Paul is one of the the go to guys that I would always go to if if you need anything, and it's not just um. It's not just design, and we'll probably go into that a little bit in the interview, um, where we talk about design is now the core part of a lot of things that are going on with marketing, be it talking about web, designing a designing a store, sure, designing an you, experience, you say, whatever. Communication is done through it. Yeah. 100%, yeah. So, no, Paul, Paul is one of the those designers that understands the the kind of the overall customer journey shall we yes. say or understand the user behavior understands consumer behavior behavior has a bit of a background in psychology as well which obviously helps and has dipped his toe into marketing in its kind of say conventional form mm. as well so Noro really really interesting and um I bring him into my students at least twice a year um in the university and they always get a really really good kick out of what he says because what he says makes sense but he also communicates quite complex ideas and makes them very, very relevant. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the looking forward to the chat. With over ten years' experience as a visual designer, Paul has earned his reputation from working as an in-house designer with many different brands, as well as working with marketing agencies as lead designer. After recently joining uh, Urban Design Studio as design manager, Paul has worked with organisations such as the Ainua Hotel Group, Fusion Communications, among many other brands. Paul, welcome to Social Antics. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Good, good. I I tell you a little story, right? Just before we came on air, there I picked up Mister or should sorry, Doctor Doctor Dave Alton there to do the to do social antics. Refer to me by my proper title, you little bollocks. <laughs> he he got into the car beside me and says, "I oh, jeez, I don't know how you do this marketing thing every day," and that just set up the evening for me. I'm fucking wrecked. <laughs> I was on a video shoot all day, and I'm wrecked. Unlike us, Paul, he he done he actually did a bit of hard work today. Yeah, but didn't he say in a couple of podcasts ago he doesn't know how designers do it every day either? 
Yeah. He was I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how you do it every so day. So is it just work in general? You don't know how people do it every day? <laughs> or? No, I, 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 I'm an academic. I'm paid to theorize and communicate with people, but the actual <laughs> doing of the stuff is fucking tough. Is it Tommy Theron said you get blisters pointing? I've never, heard, I've, never heard, I've never heard that joke to be honest I've never heard that joke Paul thanks for joining us how's things with you anyway uh, yeah busy which is really awesome and um, we are absolutely slammed in, in urban at the moment uh, working on absolutely loads of projects a couple of them I can't absolutely wait to show people and um, kind of working on in the background but uh, it, it's it's really cool there's a lot of I think people are bouncing back really really heavily at the moment we, and we, they're very brave we kind of talked about it the first time around in terms of the lockdown where kind of people were nervous. They stopped everything, put a break on everything to do with marketing, content, design, everything because they didn't want to spend money. And I think even me and you, Paul, we talked about it, even when things kind of started coming back around, say, you know, in terms of the second or third, I don't know how many lockdowns there's been now. But people started actually saying, you know what? No, it's time for a change. We need a bit of a revamp. We need to look at how we we operate online or our brand or whatever so you got kind of seen maybe a couple of those kind of projects coming in yeah i think people realize that when stuff is opening back up they couldn't just sit there they couldn't just kind of go look when we open it up it'll go back to normal because normal doesn't exist anymore i hate the phrase new normal i hate the phrase the way it used to be the fact is that whatever situation we're in now is a situation we're in and you can't just sit there and expect everything to just kind of like, as soon as you open up, customers will come back in. They won't. They, they have new routines now. They have new ways of shopping. They have new ways of doing things. And they're not just going to fall back into old habits. And I think I did, uh, Dr. David mentioned it there a couple of podcasts ago that like people are going to go rush back out and into the pub and buying stuff. And, but I think that's only going to last a couple. That's a little while. I think the digital thing is, is here and people are going to shop online as in, I know you mentioned as well that even buying clothes is the best example. People love buying clothes in person. They had the bloody appointments in pennies. I, I actually worked it out. I'm very comfortable buying clothes online now. Absolutely. But I don't need to try them on now because there's a couple of brands I have that I like. I do the exact same thing. And I used to never buy jeans in particular online. Wouldn't buy them. Yeah. I know that might go through three brands and I know my size. Yeah, that's it. I know the size and it fits perfectly. And every time I get it, it's the exact same. And I do not care about going into pennies anymore at all. I don't care about going into any shop anymore. It doesn't bother me. Like even going to Tesco's now and, and that, you know, that, that trip that became the big thing during lockdown is in the, the day out was going to Tesco's, you know, yeah, that was yeah, your yeah, weekly yeah, trip. Yeah. I, I just couldn't be asked anymore. I genuinely couldn't. And I think once people get that burst of going to the pub and going for the social scene out of their system, I think people are going to be doing dinner parties. I think that's going to be the new normal. I think that's going to be the bit that, that people are doing. They're going to be like, I don't want to go out and spend, you know, a tenner on a pint. I'm just going to get a, a, you know, a slab of beer and have people back over in my house. I think that's going to be the thing that people are doing. I don't, I think, and I think companies are starting to realize that. And that's why they, they're not sitting still anymore. Like you could have saved a lot of money and not done any marketing or any branding or any redesigns or any, any, anything during the lockdown. But I have been, I started in urban back in November and I have been slammed since the day I started. There has been rebrands. There has been, printing there's been interior design there's been everything from traditional to digital websites everything there's been absolutely everything I, I haven't had like i was i've even in the last two months i've been doing overtime like proper full-on or as you were telling you a couple of weeks if i was literally working 15 hours a day for a couple of weeks solid it was just mental um so that's that's good like i enjoy being busy but i don't i think people are a lot braver now i think they're we, we only talked, I think it was maybe last week or the week before about, um, you know, literally what you just said there, you joined, the, you joined the team in November, like, you know, it's not the best probably time to make any transition into companies, you know, because there's not been maybe proper inductions or, you know, sometimes people don't even get to meet any of their team, you know, or even their boss face to face. So we talked about it maybe last week or the week before about um, sh even students coming from college and being integrated into a marketing team. It's, it's for me it's not the best atmosphere because you always work better when you work around the team mm. did you find coming in you know as, as the head designer basically did you find it a difficult transition to come in to get to gel it's not something that you can kind of almost sit away from you kind of in your you, need, you need to be in there and I, I you, you were talking about listening to the podcast a couple of weeks ago and you were saying that even for bouncing ideas off people as in the, the industry we're in is an idea centric industry is in it's not just you know even though dave had a very hard day of actually doing work today the, the, the most of it is actually ideas it's it's creating stuff and then the doing stuff comes at the end but 
you need to be with people. Now, I, I kind of started, I started here in, I think it was November, and that was when we opened after lockdown number two, I think. I think from November to like January, we were open again, and then we shut down again. And I actually can't even keep track of it. <laughs> I actually don't even know where, where it started and where it ended. Um, but I came in here, and there's a small team in there, there's about seven or eight of us. Um, and like I'm, I'm in the office now, and I have the entire top floor is just design. And then the bottom floor is interior. And then there's a print studio at the back. So like it's very well spaced. And luckily I got to come in here and work with people. We're socially distanced. But now we've kind of, I think after a while, it just became that we were each other's bubble anyway. So yeah. we have that. So uh, I think I was lucky enough within this job that I didn't have to kind of just be somewhere else and digitally introduce myself to people and digitally work them for a month. I actually got to physically be here. And we were working from home when it shut down again in January. And we came back in last month. But um i i didn't have that issue but we did have a couple of interns from mtu and stuff like that you know those programs where they come in and they came in and then lockdown started and they were basically working with us over zoom for you know the three or four weeks they're in and it was awful i don't know how they learned anything on it because you can't you can't learn anything in marketing you know working with marketing people over zoom there's just nothing you can pick up so i i think it would be very difficult to start a new job over lockdown you mentioned there that you, you, have, you have different areas of the business. You, did you say interior there? So you're quite yeah. broad in what kind of services you offer in Urban, are you? Uh, we, yeah, I, I, I describe it as a ground up. That, that's how I describe the whole thing. Because I, I actually haven't worked in a place like this before. We literally do, as you know, myself, branding, design, digital print, the usual stuff. And then there's, we, do, we don't do a lot of marketing. We do a little bit, but that's mainly because of the background I have with the masters and stuff that I can actually bring that into everything I do. And then there's Katie, who's co-owner of Urban, and she's an interior designer. That's her background. Um, and she is, can I swear? Am I, am I allowed to swear? Oh, no, Dave, Dave has a rule. I don't think we've ever said it. We always tell the guests before. Yeah, It's BBC rules. So you're allowed three, three fucks and four cunts in the hour. So I can say as many shits as I want. Oh, yeah, loads of shit. Yeah, yeah. oh, okay, so yeah. she's shit hot. <laughs> Katie's shit hot. <laughs> so she's shit hot at what she does. And she's like, she's, she's like stupidly creative. And then there's Kiran, who's the other owner, their husband and wife team. And he's just like a print guru. He's just like, he could, he could print something with a printer. And we kind of just, we do everything. Crowley's we, is a big client of ours. Crowley's Opticians, they have, mm. they have four places now. And we literally branded them, did their, did their, um, website all their digital stuff and katie did all the interiors and all the office fillers actually, so we yeah, literally they've, had they've, control i've actually i've actually noticed yeah before they have rebranded very recently yeah, yeah. And i've, you, seen, I've you, seen big work going on in, in the in the opticians inside in the city there yeah, yeah. Do, so that's obviously that's everything from the ground up literally from the logos to the digital stuff to the signage and the custom made neons that are at the front everything is here like it's done from here and it's just it's awesome to work on because you literally get control because it's like as historically speaking you've probably been involved in projects like that you like from my point of view i'd design something and it would be brilliant and then you'd hand it over to the client and two months later it would spite a shit it's like it's in, they've ruined it and they haven't used it in the, in the appropriate way their fonts have changed their colors have changed they have it skewed they have all these weird things going on but here the clients they seem to bring in seem to hang around for a very long time and they don't just come in get something and run away again and it's just you you're literally building everything from the ground up and then you're, you're keeping it at a really high standard and a high level and it's and crowley's is a brilliant example because even you've noticed it but the one out in balancolic was the most recent one they opened um only actually this year i think the end of this year uh, end of last year started this year and the, the the place is awesome i think the word you said there the kind of stuck when you said that was um was control and one thing i know from from working with you paul personally is you come at things slightly different than any other designer so you've studied obviously you talked about marketing there but you've also studied like a bits of user experience and psychology and you know you kind of come at it from things from a different angle and to me when you go take on a project you don't just come at it from i'm gonna make this look pretty i'm gonna make it look sleek i'm gonna make it look you know shit hot or whatever i'm actually going to think about the end user as well and yeah. i want to think about is it functional does it do the job you know and from someone then on, say, our side of things where we're just, you know, we're not the designers, we're, we're the ones probably given the brief. That's hugely beneficial to have someone like you that's thinking about things in a couple of different ways. I thought that was it. You just said there a minute ago, something on the line, I'm paraphrasing here, but like you said something like we do a lot of interior, we do a lot of design, but we don't do a lot of marketing. Whereas to me, design, depending on how you conceptualize it, is the core functionality like if you think of marketing as four p's 
yeah. design is product ultimately mm. now ultimately yeah. you know, i know you can design promotions and all kinds of stuff, but ultimately your design nowadays is all about product mm. How it and if you don't the and if you don't get so I, I still find it very very interesting that when we talk about design it's almost separate from yeah, marketing. exactly it. we separate the two things when in reality they should be intertwined because if you've got I'm, I'm trying to even think of an example, but I mean, you like you've worked with clients that you think through the conceptualization of design based on the brief that they have given you, whereas in reality, you should be involved in the conceptualization process in and of itself, because you can bring in, like you said, psycholo- uh, psychological stuff, the research element. The UI, big words for you tonight, oh, Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, so it, I, I still think that that's a really, really interesting dichotomy that exists within the marketing world, that design is almost seen as like over there. It's strange. It is, and and I, I, I've i worked... No, not a lot. I, I I freelanced for a little while. I think it was just before I went. I worked in Australia for a year, and I actually was very lucky to actually work in design in Australia. I didn't just get one of those kind of farming jobs and just hop my way through. Go on, drop drop the name of the company you worked with. Out in, out I worked there. with a couple of big. Uh, Doctor Urker was there. We go. And uh, Booth Juices was another <laughs> the one. Pizza crowds. Yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it was uh, it was some good, and they were proper big projects as well. But I also did a lot of small ones, like, you know, one-off local cafes and stuff. And there was a cafe that I work with, and they dropped thousands of euro just on their branding. Like, you would not hear of a local cafe doing that here. They, they would put the money somewhere else. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but in Australia, they knew the importance of design as a whole, not just as this thing that looks pretty. And that's, that's kind of over here. That's how we think of it. I, um, I, think, I think brands here uh, or businesses do drop they could drop hundreds, if not thousands, on their brand or their brand, or their brand uh, conception or, you know, the brand guidelines or anything like this. But the problem is, and you've already said it there, is two months later, they're not following it. Yeah. They're, they've gone totally off, you know, so it's a waste of money. They may as well have went and threw it, it, it off but the, is the But is the reason for that that they're, they don't understand it? Possibly. Or is the reason that they don't have the money to invest in it? So, so they, for, they for, might not have anyone to in-house arts or someone to, to bounce it off on the no, outside but even, no but even like i would like so for example with a few guys no no one currently i don't think really to be fair but any I've, I've worked with guys in the past where they need a kind of a a brand makeup shall we say in terms of what their stuff looks like the material looks like the collateral web all that kind of stuff we go to designer and we say well we can get this done for you you get it done ultimately for as cheap as you can possibly get it and it improves where they are but they don't really understand why it's better yeah. and they don't link that back into their strategy and i actually think one of the reasons that design is suffering quite a lot at the moment and why it's kind of pushed out a bit is that now you can go on fiverr yeah and you can get stuff done really really cheaply by people who don't necessarily know what they do like even me for example it's easy for me to go on to graphic river download a bunch of templates create something which looks reasonably okay relative to something which is really, really poorly designed. And then all of a sudden, oh, look, I'm a designer without accounting for, like you said there, Paul, psychological UI, UX, mm-hmm. all the whole end-to-end process that comes with the with um, with design. Mm. And what and what have you come across a lot of that kind of stuff where people are coming to you and they've already half done a job themselves and they want you to make it a bit better or what way yeah. are kind of, what way are the, the clients coming in? It, it's it's the same as, as always. Like you'd have clients come in and think that a logo can be done in 20 minutes. And you know, and I've I've even here not so much because I, I think the Urban actually had quite a good name, but freelance probably the best one is when I did and you'd say how much is a logo? And let's say it was four hundred quid, which is about a third of what an agency would charge you just for a logo design. And they'd be like, "That's way, how could you charge that? You're just drawing a picture of me." And that's the kind of attitude <laughs> the smaller group, groups would come to you. But the reason then that I did the, I did the marketing and I did the UX and I did the UI and I did the psychology and all that is because I I, I understand that design is only a part of marketing. It's not the be all and end all, but it is a very important part. And yeah, it's pretty close design. to me. Yeah, it's really yeah. it's important. Like no doubt. Yeah, and it's it like a design can make or break a marketing campaign or a strategy in the long term. Um, just as like any other part of uh, the marketing funnel or whatever can be, you know, can make or break it too. But I, I need to understand it from, from a very fundamental level in order to do the best job that I can do going forward. As in, there's the, one of the projects I'm working on at the moment. I'm not going to say it on air because it's not out there yet and I'll probably get in a whole lot of trouble. I'll tell you when we turn off the microphone. Um, but okay. we're rebranding them <laughs> and Katie's doing the interiors for them and it's a huge, huge job. 
And uh, the logo is probably one of the best logos I've ever come up with. And it is ridiculously simple. And I guarantee you for someone from outside of a marketing, marketing background at all, we're looking at it going, that is shit. <laughs> They'd be like, that makes no sense. But when you take a step back and you see that I didn't just, even how I presented, I didn't present the logo first. I presented about 10 pages of why this actually makes sense. And then when they understood where it's coming from, once they saw the, the, the visual, they were like, shit, yeah, that actually makes sense. And all of a sudden you have a, a room full of people that even before they saw the visual, they were behind why it was a visual. And when you can, when the people who are selling the product or who are the product themselves are kind of like, I understand it, then they're going to sell it without even needing the visual. They can sell the, you know, that, that kind of emotional benefit that's in their product without even needing the visual to represent it. And that's the bit you need to understand. You need to understand, as you see, number one, how it's going to be used and what it does for people before you can actually have a visual that represents the product itself. You, you actually told me a great story. Um, I can't remember what the brand was or who it was, but something about the drawing the logo on the napkin, was it? Oh, that was the city, city by CITI. Um, oh, Pamela, oh, what's her name? She's, she's huge. She, she's cool. And I know a pentagram, you know, the huge design mm. agency and the city, it was a city bank or something like that. Something so like that's that, what they yeah. were. She went in for a meeting and they were, they had a briefing meeting over, you know, coffee or dinner or whatever. And she basically drew the logo as they were talking on a napkin while they were there, brought the napkin back to the, the studio, drew it up, sent it to them. And one of the people came back on, you literally drew that while you were in front of us. How can we pay you all these tens of thousands to come up with it? And she said, you're not paying me for the 40 seconds it took me to, to design it. You're paying for the 40 years of experience it took me to learn how to do that. You know, as in it's, mm, it's, yeah. she basically took everything in in a very short space of time. She, she's incredibly, she's brilliant, actually. She's, she's like one of the, the top kind of people that all designers kind of, kind of look to. And, um, and she basically said, you're paying for the experience that, in which I learned how to do this for you. I learned how to represent you very, very quickly. I think the logo is actually still in use today. That was about 30 years ago. And, and I think that's kind of what, what Dave was saying there. Do you know that that's so unappreciated now that people will go off to Fiverr and, you know, go off to Canva or whatever it is and just do it themselves and just, you know, they can't justify that kind of money, even in terms of marketing, you know, someone, you know, they just can't justify spending that kind of money, I, I think. Well, it's, it, it's part, I think it's part ignorance, part... Yeah. Um, part not willing to spend the money like like there's some things that people say still with it because I, I i'm always of the opinion that like now it has become um it has become a lot more authoritative i would say and um, but marketing was always seen as the lesser kind of the lesser cousin to your finance or your account or whatever the story was nowadays more and more you are seeing kind of cmos at boardroom level um but i think a lot of that came from marketing kind of took ownership of a lot of other areas by accident so the supply chain was supply chain then all of a sudden e-commerce came along and now supply chain is owned by marketing so there's a kind of a marketing is kind of expanding all the time and i think there is a kind of a an ignorance to some of the complexities around that um like i mean if you take the kind of again the hard maths of accountancy and you compare that to the intricacies of designing a brand people say, oh, well, you're drawing a picture, whereas I'm doing accounts, whereas in reality, it's the drawing of the picture that allows you to generate the as, much, uh, <laughs> as, much, as, much, as much revenue as possible. So I think, I think it's interesting. And what you said there, I think it's spot on. People are still charged based on time, which I find Ridiculous. fascinating. Yeah, it's, um, it's a crazy, it's crazy incredible. thing. Incredible, yeah, it's yeah. bizarre. Unless, unless you're paid by the hour. <laughs> You'll be dragging it out a bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, unless you're paid by, yeah, unless you're paid by the hour. Yeah, no, it's absolutely, because I've seen, we've all come across the clients who, like, you go to and they say, Oh yeah, how long will it take you to do this? I'm like, I don't fucking know. I can give it to you. Know, I think there's actually a great thing, isn't there? Um, uh, you see like Spider Man or whatever being. Oh, drawn. the tr tree drawings. Yeah, yeah the tree drawings. Kind of one, wrong. one's drawn in sixty seconds. One's drawn in ten minutes, and one's drawn in twenty minutes or something like that. And you just Never, see the yeah. difference, the difference in the the time it takes to to get the outcome. But when a client comes and sits down with you for the first time what kind of areas do you explore what do you ask what you know what what should someone come in that's wanting to get a brand new um design or maybe it's a revamp even what should they kind of mindset should they be coming in with uh open is is probably the easiest answer to that because you've probably come across it the amount of people who come in 
and they're basically holding my hand while I'm designing on the computer, if you know what I mean, like figuratively speaking, actually once it nearly did happen, but figuratively speaking, <laughs> that like they're kind of saying, this is what I have in my head, this is what I want you to draw. And all you basically are is you are, you're a jigsaw puzzle maker, that's how I describe it, is and they mm. come in and they say, I want this here and this here and this here, and all you're doing is using a program to put those things together. Um, but if you're genuinely interested in what we've discussed is in creating something that is long lasting, that actually represents the business or the product as best as possible and gives it the best foothold in a strategy going forward, then come in with the most open mind possible. Come in with exactly what you're trying to achieve, where you want to go, where you want to be, you know, what is it that, that you do that's different? And I'm not even saying like a USP because I think I, I did a, a talk uh, last year in Republic of Work. It's, you know, I, I hate the you know, unique selling point. As in, there's not that many things nowadays that are actually unique. You know, if you do anything in a business, now someone else does it. You know, someone else does it in some shape or form or some I mean, slight differences, but there's nothing that's really, truly unique anymore. And that's why I think storytelling has become so big is because you, once you tell a story, people relate to you. And once people relate to you, you got them. Once, once you, someone kind of, you know, interacts with you on, on an emotional level, you have them. That, that's all you've got. Your, your, your job then is maintenance, is, is just like make sure you keep them. Um, and that's what you need to do if you're coming in for, for specifically for brands, let's say. You need to kind of understand what your story is, what you do for the customer. I don't want, like, if you said Jim Plus Coffee, I don't want them coming in saying we sell jumpers because they don't. They, they created this, this fitness community. And they're one of the few people. I hate the term community because everybody says they do it, but they actually did. But they they did. They actually did create it, and that's how they built their entire entire brand. And um, and that's that's kind of one of that's what you need to do. You need to come up with an open mind and know what you want to do, what you want to achieve, and what you're selling, and not on a literal level, on a you know, on a almost a metaphorical level. What is it you're, what is it you're doing for the person that your 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 kind of counterpart isn't doing. But what I like about your stuff, Paul, is that like you said, and it frustrates me when if you go, if you look at from set code and right down to someone in the public of work or whatever the case may be, someone asks, oh yeah, what's going on at this moment in time in marketing? And someone is going to say, or they're going to say storytelling. Everything is fucking storytelling, which is a bit of a cop out really, because it's just <laughs> no, it's, anything could be a story. Yeah. But what I like, and you did a session for me um, in with, for my um, uh, master's students last year, where you went through not so much storytelling per se, but you also looked at the nuances around kind of um, the psychology of design, for example, which then yeah. kind of filters into its own storytelling. So there's a nuance to this as well, right? It's not just about telling lovely stories because th- we anybody all know it's not as simple as that. Yeah, and anybody can make up a story that's lovely, as in anybody can do that. But there are certain brands, and I think there were, the, the one that I really focused on and that I almost became a brand ambassador for was Nike. I think Nike are exceptional advertisers. Um, and I'd say once a year, they come out with something that every, everybody's talking about or some yeah, shape or form. Um, and they have, and I did the example I used in, in, in that talk, I actually, I, I took an ad for every decade since their first television ad. And every single one of them does the exact same thing. It doesn't sell a product to anybody. It doesn't, it doesn't say how great we are compared to Adidas or whoever it is. They literally just kind of went, you like running you know we like running we can make you better at running and that means you can be the best you you can be they just they just they were people pushers that's what they're doing they're saying you know you know do what you do and we'll help you do it better um, and they were like almost in, in they were running alongside them rather than saying pushing a product on them and they did it brilliantly and like that's what nike have always done and they have you know even in in their adverts the last week take away the kind of creativity of them they've always kind of done regular people that's what they've always focused on. And there's a brilliant one. Um, and I showed the ad, I think it was from 2010. And there was this kind of slightly overweight kid. And he's just running from the distance forward. And that, that's, it's 30 seconds. I think it's 30 seconds or a minute ad. And all you see him in the background running, you know, towards you. And it's basically the thing is anyone can be great. And he just runs off screen and that's it for like a minute. And all you hear in the whole thing is, is him heavily breathing, but he doesn't stop. He runs from way back there all the way in front of you. And it's just kind of like, that was, you know, that's kind of empowering. I'm going to go out for a run now, you know, even though you've never gone for a run before. And they just have this way of speaking to people that makes it feel like you can do whatever the hell you want. And it's incredibly empowering. 
it's empowering, but it's also kind of a bit of a fault on society that we fall for all this stuff, right? Ultimately, no, yeah. Well, it's like, 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 well, you're a doctor, and myself and Dave have masters in it. We still fall for the bloody stuff. I know, so I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> well, I'd watch it, exactly. but I don't think I'd go for the run after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but see, um, I think what um, and you said it there in relation to Nike, and what I love about Nike is not what you, you, you just said there, and that they've always had, the, and they've had the same team as well, which is all kind of about the underdog and stuff like that, yeah. but. What I always love about Nike stuff is that they're not afraid to take risks in terms of what they're promoting. And we saw that with the Kaepernick stuff there yeah. two years ago, right? And we had this conversation with Stephen Ryan, I think maybe, I don't know, lockdown has a few weeks ago. killed time. It could have been <laughs> yesterday. It could have been a year ago. I don't know. But we basically made the point that the majority of advertising that we would see now or new brands are designed are really really boring mm. like there's no one and i hate using words like disruptive and stuff like that because they're just buzzwords but there's, there's no brand out. has come recently and said oh that's really really different jim close coffee to be fair have done a really really good job with it locally but there's not that many i would say even international brands or pseudo national brands thing, that have done really really well there was a thing i saw during the week it was um some sort of a marketing you know a poll that happens each month i've actually never come across it before i can't remember what it even is now but it was basically um the shout out of campaigns kind of brands you know the top 10 kind of a thing and the first and it hasn't moved from the first two first one was little it was aldi and in number three was the hse so that showed you how boring things are at the moment <laughs> and, aldi, and aldi and little's branding isn't great it's humorous it's not branding it's, it's just they're they're, well they're it always yeah out there they're, they're and, you know, kind of funny every once in a while or they yeah. do st- or they take a piss on twitter or something and like they, that and, they, and it's kind of funny and they, do, and they do it with each other i'm convinced yeah. they both have each other on a whatsapp group the two social media <laughs> what, what are you up to today? You, you you mock me there and i'll mock you back and yeah. people will like both of us like, it's, it's I mean? not they should be <laughs> yeah that's, that's actually quite good yeah but um yeah but nobody's doing anything anymore the advertising i mean i i always go back to the cabbage gorilla I mean, that stuff is just <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And nobody is that brave anymore. Nobody is that brave to have nothing to do with anything happening in an advert anymore and still have it completely related back to a product. It makes that's it, actually, it technically you know, makes no sense. We haven't mentioned that. And that's actually an ad I haven't talked about in a long time. But Jerry, you're totally right. That's an ad that totally was so different. So just out there, but it's totally kind of, um, you know, it's just kind of totally stuck, you know, yeah. for what it is. And it changed so many things. It changed... People thought, you know, whatever about gorilla playing drums, they finally they found out Phil Collins from it, you know, all this kind yeah, of stuff. Exactly. Like, it just totally like, changed so many things. There's not many brands can do that kind of a thing. No, and I think the market is saturated too, though, as in I think digital has done that, where it's it's very brilliant, as in great, it's given everybody a platform that they can cheaply get in front of people. You know, you talk to Facebook ads and and all that kind of stuff, but it also means that the place is full of people shouting at you you know in, the place. in terms in terms of creating content paul have you like over the last few years in terms of seeing like obviously you would have come probably from you know it's obviously your static image kind of graphic design your traditional yeah. graphic design how have you moved along with it? like how, have you started developing more into maybe animation or maybe you know yeah i haven't i haven't i have a huge issue with with video and with animation not from a literal but I, I love video and animation i love watching it i actually my first ever course i did a year in st john's of traditional animation like hand drawn stuff that's mm. where i got into design um but it's become a thing and you've probably seen it in marketing you know like if you say we're hiring a, an executive marketer and it's like we want someone who knows social who knows google analytics who knows this who knows this who knows this and you're like they're all actually separate elements of marketing you you should have an expert in each of those not not someone who's an expert in everything and that's what design has become design is like we want you to know how to use photoshop and illustrator and indesign and after effects and and video and we need you to go over and actually take photographs and then go and actually take a video and it's like i'm not a photographer there's a reason that you know there's a job called photographer it's because it's separate to designer and there's a reason there's someone called a videographer because it's separate to a designer and there's a reason there's someone called a web developer now i know how to use these things i know how to build work like wordpress websites and i know how to use after effects I'm, I'm not good at it but i know how to use it because i've had to learn how to do it i don't like doing it it's not it's not where my where my interest lies but when i have to do it i do use it um but come at your point it's become a standard hasn't it like being able you know video online be able to, to be able to dabble in different things yeah but it depends on where you are in your career and what you're doing as well so i do a, i do a thing with my students um paul you're gonna love this i basically <laughs> kind of i basically kind of sell it to them that 
I'll turn you into a graphic designer within 20 minutes. Now it's done in tongue in cheek, but it yeah. is the classic going yeah. on to going on. Basically what I do is I go on to graphic river. I give them a couple of scenarios. And um, I think one is, is, is a campaign that I did for Cork city football club a few years ago, where basically I went on a graphic river, bought four different templates, took the different elements of the different templates that I liked, ran them together, got whatever Jersey. And it was a really, really good campaign. Um, in your opinion. Oh no, it was it was shit. Hot. It won awards and everything, <laughs> but it was uh, no, it was it was it was it was decent for what it was. But again, that was from a non-designer. Yeah. Now, from my perspective, I'm telling students that because I know that when they do go into the workplace, they are faced with the well, why can't you do this, this, and this? Didn't you do marketing for four years in college? Surely, Surely you yeah. can create documentaries and create me a brand <laughs> and do photography and all this kind of stuff. So there's um. I think there is an element with marketers nowadays whereby they have to kind of start off with a very, very broad base, not being very, very good at a lot of things, but having a, a base knowledge of a lot of things and then ultimately specializing in them when they almost get into year two and three. Well, the problem with that is that when it transcends people who are lead designers or whatever and you're going to them and you're saying, oh, why don't you do the photography? That, that's where I think it's a yeah. misunderstanding on the um that's where it's a misunderstanding on the um on the client side or the, the employer side of the case but i do think it's a very very weird and strange and interesting dichotomy between what a marketer is depending on the industry depending on the size of the business how many people are in an organization and how do you grapple with all of those different skill sets as ultimately the size, going the size, as you said there the size of the business is obviously a big one it always is a big one because obviously. a lower level business won't as you said paul you know hiring different people in different fields they just don't have the, the budget to do it pretty much but i think a big thing that's caused this all to change really is one social media but also technology like it's so easy just just take a photo with the oh phone. it's technology yeah. it's you know, makes it's, everything yeah, but you, so you easy. have you have played things like like i know you said fiber and stuff even though i like ask any designer fibers the devil it literally yeah. it's given design a terrible name that it's this quick and simple thing that you can do for four dollars in 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 another country basically but you do have he, elements he, he, like there. he what? said other country he didn't specify the country <laughs> yeah, but we all know <laughs> but, <laughs> but like um you have things like canva and like i think Dave, i think you said it to me before you didn't want to say canva to me because you thought I, i'd go on a rant about how shit canva the screen at me <laughs> but i think canva is brilliant i think like i can't as i said i i know about video and i can do very basic stuff i can do typography you know flying across all, all the you know the simple fancy stuff but Canva's brilliant. Canva with I, the stock video Canva, and adding stuff on. I think Canva is great for for obviously yeah, your design, you know, your design studio, and there's loads of you working. But if you weren't all designers and there was a group of people, whether it's a marketing team, you know, a bit of a bigger business, if you're all kind of working, Canva has this ability in there to have your own basically brand guidelines built into the background with your fonts, yeah. your colors, you know, and rules and regulations, basically. So you as the head designer can set out those rules, create the initial templates, and then people can go in like so take for example you worked with a group before um you know where you have multiple properties you know so you could set someone rules and regulations they might not understand because maybe they're just out of college or maybe they just didn't study it like me personally i didn't study graphic design so i wouldn't i'd know the basics of photoshop i wouldn't know the ins and outs of it i wouldn't be comfortable enough to work yeah. on it every day to create stuff whereas if you as the boss man set out the rules and regulations on canva and i could go in edit little bits but you were happy enough because you knew I couldn't change it or mess it up too much, if that made sense. So yeah, Canva is brilliant that's where for Canva that. comes in for that kind of yeah. stuff. And we did actually use Canva in that in that job. And um, really? okay. yeah, we did. It was it was handy because I mean, when you think well, we had nine properties and there was, you know, I think it was 12 different marketers, you know, throughout the properties and in, in the, the head office. So like there was a lot of people to manage um, or let's say design assets to manage rather than people. I didn't manage the people, but... Um, and it's that's the thing if you're a small business and they're the things you have to use that's it's a brilliant tool and you should use it i would never tell anybody not to use it like it's it's a brilliant tool but if you get bigger and you genuinely want to make an impact in your marketing yes. you need to hire the proper people to do the proper job using a stock video will only get you so far and i'm sorry like as in i i did i did a test once of a stock image um, I found basically through ridiculous amount of Googling that one of the most popular stock images used. You know, that guy who smiles and he, he, he's a doctor in one image and he's a vet in the other and yeah, he's, yeah. A, he, he's holding an apple in another image. And I basically, like, I, I went and tested to see how many times I could find him on Google. I just reversed image search. <laughs> and I saw him in, I'd, it must have been, 
I don't know how many ads even on the first page, like just in actual adverts, not just the image of him, you know, on Shutterstock or something, just in different adverts with words over him. And like, uh, that's that's not good enough. So if you even, want to even do got stuff, to, like, we we talked about back when we talked about the Super Bowl there a few months back. Um, two of the two obviously they're not small brands in the Super Bowl, but two uh, brands decide to use clips from the same uh, stock catalog, basically. Like you know, yeah. they're called out obviously because of COVID. Though, isn't it? it doesn't matter. You should like you know you're use you're recreating at that level. You shouldn't be recreating anything with stock images. Yeah, but they had to. Fuck, they find another way. I don't like... care. You should not at that level when you have that kind of money. You figure something out yeah yeah <laughs> i mean ultimately for me it all comes down to and this is just i think it's business in general marketing in particular there's too much of a focus on output and not enough of a focus on process mm. it is very very easy for you to now create a brand or to create videos based on stock or based like i get ads the whole time for you're creating fucking instagram stories where there's things flying in flip writing center and all the crap like you can do all this stuff now right without the help of a designer but just because it looks good, it doesn't mean that you should use it because ultimately you haven't thought about why am I using this particular design? What's the context within which I'm using the design? What's the purpose of it? And I think that that, that whole process that we theorize about in universities in particular, and you would do it a lot, Paul, as well, in terms of going through that design process, that to me is basically taken out of the equation because someone goes well i need to save 75 percent of the budget here and ultimately instead of investing where they should be investing in it is in which is the the kind of the research the critical thinking the theorizing the conceptualizing about the brand they just want i want a brand yeah. doesn't matter, what, just, doesn't matter if want, it's my brand to, it's our brand yeah they want something that's out in front of people now and they yeah. don't want to actually put the work in. And I've worked plenty of jobs where that's been the case, where like as even for companies and for clients that have just like, doesn't matter what the thinking is behind it, as long as you have something that goes live tomorrow or the next day or, you know, as fast as possible. And that stuff, it, it doesn't get you anywhere. You know, it gets you, it gets you an image or a video on Facebook tomorrow, but I guarantee you that's going to be ignored. As in like, as I said earlier, Facebook has allowed everybody to advertise as cheaply as possible and it's brilliant and it works. But I mean, you, you basically, you know, if you're scrolling through, I mean, I don't even, I don't think, I can't remember the last time I was even on Facebook, but I'm just using them as an example. But I don't know anyone who uses Facebook anymore. I'm kind of surprised gone. they're so popular. I don't get it. Business I don't, is still I don't use it. it. I just use it for the business side. Yeah, I but really that's exactly. No, no, no. But you, yeah, but, yeah, but you say you use it for the business side, but if there's no people on it, then right. how are you using it for business? Other businesses. <laughs> yeah, true. It's a load of a load of everyone's on there, but just like little and Ali. That's how they yeah. chat now yeah, because yeah, nobody yeah, else is yeah. on. <laughs> true, it's a good point. But I do, I do think still people still scroll through. They might not use it, share. You know, they might not like. Even to be yeah. honest, I don't use the messenger side of it that much anymore. But I still think people are on it. They're just not engaging. I, I think people are using it like they use a website. Yeah, it's to just get your scanning. contact details yeah. and feck off. That's yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. I think. That's fine, I, yeah. I think because you know when you're you're googling it and. Or even as a testimonial thing, you go on and see if, you know, if they've posted anything recently or someone's commented on them. You know, you, you kind of, it's almost like a business snooping thing now where you go in, get the information about them and off you go. Because um, that's what it's basically is. It's all, it's, it, nobody uses it for actual interaction anymore at all. Like, and Instagram's going the same way. People aren't interacting on it. They're just selling you shit now. Most of the time, <laughs> Instagram anyway. was never interactive or engaging, is my really? opinion. Now, it was all photographs and vanity, narcissism. It was, it was, I so, people it. engaging in the photos, yeah, but not really. Like, no, yeah, not I really. disagree. No, I think, I think it was it, of the platforms, it was probably the most engaging in terms of in, engaging with content. Like TikTok, don't start. Don't start. <laughs> Do you use TikTok, but I actually, I, I joined TikTok about a month ago because one of my friends in America was on it and she kind of sent me videos of like really funny stuff. And I was like, I have to get on this. And I think it's bloody brilliant. It's amazing. It, it's the it best is, thing in the it world. It is definitely the most dangerous out of all the social medias it without is, a shadow of a doubt. But it, is, it is phenomenal. And, it's, and what's even better is that it's great fun. It's owned by the Chinese government pretty much. <laughs> and they're capturing all our data. And you know what? No one gives a shit. No one, everyone's just like, oh yeah, David, dancing dogs. I'm all for it. David, be proud. It's not dancing dogs, but I actually put my first TikTok on my one today. There you go now. Your you own TikTok. As in I made a video and put it up on TikTok today. Oh God, well, you ever, you ever so I, I don't even follow anybody on it. I just look at stuff all day long. It's, it's... Oh yeah, I don't follow anyone. I don't, yeah. I don't even think I have an account. I just scroll. <laughs> no, I have an account, but I got an account because you can just scroll through stuff. <laughs> you yeah, can go yeah, through yeah, everything. And... You sound so dodgy there. I don't even have an account. I just scroll. I'm just there. Scroll. I'm just like, in the yeah. background. That's Absolutely. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Locker, locker. Is that, is that the only? There's another, there's another word for it as well. But we won't go there. Um, that's the that's <laughs> definition of character. Is that is, oh, because you've never definitely no, anyone never, on this podcast. Never. Paul, I wanted to bring up as well about a talk I heard you do. I don't know how many months ago now it was. Um, as you said, we lost track of time. But this whole idea of I'm going to get it wrong now because I can never. It's the wrong way around. Basically, bias by design was it? Or that was the yeah. That was the name of the talk. Bias by design. It's all about cognitive. Bias or unconscious bias, whichever way you want to. A lot of smart sentences. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. I use a lot of big words that time. <laughs> um, like psychology, I actually should probably put a caveat there. I'm in no way a psychologist or or a therapist or any 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 trained. I have a diploma in psychology. That's about Dave, it. Dave's a doctor. Surely he'd be able to. Yeah, you, you some sort of a, terms. a yeah. note <laughs> by yeah. the end of this. Yeah, yeah. Um, if, if I if I if I'm a doctor, then Paul is a high priestess. <laughs> <laughs> high priestess of bias. Um, well, and it's, I, go ahead no it's it's it was it's an area psychology has always been an area that's absolutely fascinated me and because of the study in stuff like marketing and user experience and user interaction it's just a part of it when you get down to the very basics of marketing and and, and user interaction basically it's all down to psychology everything we do is down to psychology it can all be traced back to that so it's a kind of an area that i like to study i kind of do it in my spare time like a nerd and I think you, you one of the, the points you, you made in it was a stat or something that basically people every day make around, was it 35,000? Something like that, 35,000 35, decisions 35,000 decisions a day. Did you make that many decisions today, Dave? Oh, I did. Oh, I did. <laughs> you doubled it today. I hired many decisions that I made today. I don't know if any of them were right, but I made many decisions today. <laughs> well, I think, I think that's fascinating. I think coming from our point of view and going back to what we said about, you know, being standout and being, you know, I hate this phrase, thumb stopping and all this kind of stuff. But that thumb is almost, stopping. Yeah. Scroll, what a horrible you know, phrase. Thumb stopping, scrolling. Yeah, yeah, I know, I get it, but it's just it shit. is horrible. I don't, I don't like it either, but it's a big one. Bullshit. You use it in every single lecture you do. What? Thumb do stop all you do. Every single lecture you do me. Thumb stop thumb with social media. Yeah. Your content needs to be thumb stopping. It does though. I don't agree. I don't like the phrase, but it has to be. So you just keep on using it. Of course I do. Yeah, because people know what I'm on about. Um, so <laughs> isn't that your thing, Paul? C- clear and concise, isn't that? Clear, yeah, clear and concise to the point. Yeah, as simple as possible. <laughs> keep it simple for you, Dave. Thanks, <laughs> but, very, thanks very much. But I think I think that that whole thing of 35,000 decisions, and obviously it's probably growing each day, and the noise is growing each day, and obviously coming over the next couple of weeks of everything opening back up. Do you think that that puts even more pressure on marketers or designers to to get it right? Do you know that that's no? I think they're they're doing they're going to be doing the exact same stuff they do every time. As in, like I have a weird relationship with marketing. I did the 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 level eight that we did, and then I went into the masters. I actually hate marketing as as a subject. I think it's I think it's the devil. Like your your basically your job is to lie to people. But the fact don't is, it's part of it. And as a designer, you're whiter than white. <laughs> oh no, but that's that's the point. Is and the point is is that like not every marketer is a liar. I'm not saying that, but your job is to sell something to somebody. That's your job. Your job is to put something in front of them and make them want to have it. And there's a lot of companies out there who do that very very underhandedly. And there's a lot of people who just present themselves as good as they can. The same as if you're going to a wedding, you're dressed in a nice suit. You don't wear a nice suit every day. But, you know, that day you look very good. It's the same idea. Um, yeah, I, but- yeah, I would absolutely 100% agree with that. Like, ultimately, as I, as I would see, I differentiate between brand marketing and product marketing. Mm-hmm. People have a good product and they wrap, they communicate what's good about their product and they kind of get away with it. <laughs> Anyone who does the typical brand thing, which is take a very, very substandard product and just wrap it in symbols of something sure. that people do not want or they, they not think they want to the be then ultimately that is that is incredible but i would even argue like nike for example yeah like, like we like we like everything every, every every marketer looks at nike and goes they are incredible at what they do but what they and do they is the most over manip- in china so yeah and and their messaging is incredibly is incredibly manipulative like i think there was it someone um i should probably know the name of the theorist but ultimately the purpose of marketing is to get people to buy things that they don't need or money they don't have to impress people that they don't know. That was Fight that Club. Is ultimately, who is that? Fight Club. Is that Fight Club? That was Fight Club. Yeah. That Fight Club. Yeah, that's Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's not. Oh. Oh. It is. I'm telling you, it's uh, that. Paul said that to me. Yeah, Tyler that is going up. Tyler Durden, Durden giving a big fight academic club. speech there. God, hit your students. You know that. <laughs> I know. There's no. It's definitely. So I Tyler Durden know. Fight Club. I will get the link and I will send it to you. Send it over. Send it um, over. <laughs> well, right. that, that's that's what it is. No, you know, but you are dead. Well, right. well, who, well whoever whoever the fellow in Fight Club is, he got it right. Yeah, he got it damn right. He, that's why he blew up once said. Yeah, he got it right. He should have PhD. <laughs> oh jeez. He might do. We don't know. He was he was bang on the bang on money. Yeah, to be fair. But it is. But it is true. And I think ultimately this idea of hating marketing, everyone should hate marketing. What are you fucking laughing? <laughs> oh. I got one thing wrong. One thing wrong, and he's no, making it's, the it's most not, of it. I, it's not even. It's hating long, it was a long day. You actually worked today. It's put you. I know. Yeah, it's yeah, a good quote, though. You can't argue with the quote. Can't argue with the quote. Is shit hot. In yeah, fairness. the quote is, and it's it was correct. Seriously, Fight Club. That it is, is. It's Fight incredible. Club. That it's a great amazing. movie too, though. To be fair, so. I love the way I managed to call Fight Club without realizing that I was calling Fight Club. That's the best thing I've done. That's the day. second rule of Fight Club. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but like, I don't even think you should hate marketing. I just think you should understand it. I just think you should, and it's the same thing that I did with the bias talk, and that's one of the reasons that I think it's important to talk about it, because bias ultimately is a negative thing. It's, it's you know, making an illogical decision. That's what, the, you know, bias is incredibly oversimplified, but you should just ask questions. If, you're, if someone is forcing a product in front of you, which is basically advertising in a nutshell, they're forcing something in front of you, you need to ask the question, why, what, who, where, and how, as in, you, don't, you can't just accept this stuff at face value. So that that's all. I didn't. I, it's not. I said that I hate it. I do kind of hate it, but it's it's just that you need to ask the questions whenever something is put in front of you. You need to ask. Yeah, but I would argue that okay, you're talking about psychology there, and that's the individual. Mm. Whereas I would argue that the individual units, i.e., multiple individuals, and if you manipulate them, that ultimately impacts upon culture. Yeah. And culture is something that you can't really ignore unless you're incredibly strong will level headed. So for oh, example, oh yeah, and that's 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 oh geez, yeah, that's incredibly true. And it's and that and that's mar- and that is marketing one oh one. Like I mean, if you look at um um conventional um masculinity, for example, yeah, that is marketing in terms of how marketing wants that to be per- or want it to be portrayed yeah. um over the years. And you can go through Marlboro Man and all the, all well, the but stereotypical... Like companies have defined society for God knows how long. Exactly. As in, abs- absolutely without a shadow of a doubt. And every single time they do it, it's completely and utterly underhanded in, in no other way than to sell a product, and that's it. And all of us do it. All of us have, have links to, to brands that we, we just, you know, we absolutely love, you know, for no real, you know, we put our own emotions on it, basically. Like, I, yeah. I, I love buying Converse. Converse aren't exactly the best shoe in the world. Jesus Christ, they're not. Like, have you ever worn Converse in the rain? It's the worst bloody idea. And we live in Ireland, for God's sake. But I buy them every single time I need a new pair of shoes. I go to Converse and it's just my own emotional link. I put in it back to when I was young and they were the coolest shoes in the world. Um, but like, as you said, the bias, even like, what is it, in-group bias? You know, that's where yeah. you kind of like, you do what you do based on a group perspective. So you kind of say, I like this, but it's actually the group likes it. You're just saying you like it because the group like it. And that's that's what companies have done since geez, the beginning of time, really. Like they've all done it, um, and it's you're never going to stop companies doing it. That's that's no. the issue, and that's that's why I think that the job is on the individual now because you're not being advertised to almost as a group anymore. Everybody has their own device in front of them. You know, everybody is an individual when they see ads now. It's almost you're doing a one-on-one. People companies have a one-on-one relationship with people now, and it should be on the person to ask the question why. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not Jesus. I'm not saying because there is it's obviously a cultural kind of, you know, this cultural bias there and this cultural, you know, it, it relates to something. So you're going to try and be in with the group. But you should ask why at the same time. You should you should be prepared to ask the questions of the company is shouting at you in front of you, you know? Yeah, no, no, it makes sense. I, I think it's very difficult for people to do because even though well, like you talk about there, but in group bias and stuff like that, like ultimately no, and I know. Like what you're saying there about people having an individual relationship with brands because of the screen that's absolutely true but i would also argue that people are there for part of an even bigger group but they are even more kind of individual but almost lonely within that group of that yeah. makes sense. i don't mean individual in an empowering way i mean in a kind of a distant kind of way or kind of a powerless individual within an overall collective so i think it's kind of um I, th- I think that the, and we could do a full session on the manipulation of kind of marketers and stuff like that. It would be great if people did kind of, and I think actually the most shocking thing is that I think people actually nowadays know that they're being manipulated, but they can't still stop being manipulated. I, th- I think what's yeah. even funnier is when marketers think that they're immune 
to it. Do you know? Sure that? Oh, no, I, like, like, I understand this, so I'm not yeah. like yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, 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 I would, I'd never be fooled. You know that yeah. kind of thing. You know, it's but, like that whole thing. I think Paul, one of the examples you give in that talk is like the decoy effect. Sure oh, that's that the, the same as you brought that up the, the movie popcorn they were like it's the same idea like you're tricked every time you look at a menu or every time you look at a pricing structure and anything that they add stuff in there to make the higher or lower one seem better than it actually is and that middle like like i use coffee but i know movie popcorn is the most most intelligent one the medium popcorn is a completely fictional thing it's made up nobody ever buys the medium because it's only a euro more less expensive than the large, but it's like three euro more expensive than the small. So of course you're going to go for the large. Like logically, it even makes sense when you're looking at it, but like everything in every element of like the marketing kind of plan and every kind of way that um, a company, at every point a company interacts with a person, there is manipulation going on in some shape or form, every single point of it. And we do it without even realizing it as, as marketers and designers ourselves. And I, that's the reason I actually, I, I, I kind of got into the, the bias thing so much is because I genuinely wanted to understand what I was doing and if I could not do it. And there's stuff out there that we do even if we don't mean to do it. And even if you go beyond bias and you look at you know, co- cognitive distortion, which is kind of like its brother, if you know what I mean, that it's, it's, it's a way of thinking rather than, than a bias. But we do it and it's inbuilt in us. It's, it's not autumn. It's, it's, it's like subconscious. That's what bias is. It's not a conscious thing that we're not sitting there at, 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 in our marketing plans going, Haha, I'm going to trick all these people now and make them buy all this stuff that they don't, don't give buy. away the secrets. Will you? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> we, we don't have an evil plan board, you know, that's all they're going. What evil plan will we, we enact today? Evil it's, marketing plan. Like yeah. <laughs> that, that's a skit that we should absolutely. <laughs> Actually not a bad one. That'd be, that'd be a good idea. Um, Next up after the podcast is a skit show, guys. That's, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Saturday Night Live, but like a different version. Like Mark- a much marketers shit, take a, over. A, a much worse, <laughs> less successful marketing oriented version of Saturday Night Live. I think you said something there about um, kind of understanding people and the psychology, and that's why you went down that route that you wanted to kind of delve into that whole side of things a little bit more. Do you think it's actually important? Like you always say to me, do you know that? not you don't always say to me that you're not a marketer but you know that you're you're more so down the design and the brand route whereas i think yeah. you actually definitely are in terms of marketing because you understand so many different elements and you put so much work into the different elements it's not just as we already talked about the logo or an ad or whatever it is he just but wants he, to seem less evil than the rest yeah, of is, i'm yeah. trying to come across as the nice make himself more yeah. fluffy <laughs> wait, wait which is the most manipulative thing it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shit <laughs> <laughs> but do you do you think that anyone going into marketing or design or, or, you know, we just keep it broad in those areas, but do you think they should look at some sort of learning a bit around, you know, whether it's consumer behavior, psychology, you know, that areas, do you think they Without should? Doubt, I think everybody on this planet should study psychology in some shape or form as just in a, not in a huge, cause it's actually incredibly difficult. I was going to do a degree in this, in, in uh, the open university, but it takes like not have enough now at this English. stage. No, no, I need a couple more. Um, but it's just, it's a long haul to do it. And I, I think I will do it eventually when I'm not so busy. And I think when things are back to, back to the way they were. But I think even if you don't go into psychology, I think ethic, ethics and empathy are two things that are missing from most of the world at the moment. And like, that's, you know, that's, just what our nick, that's what our nicknames could be myself and Dave. I'd be ethics and you'd be empty, would you? <laughs> <laughs> I think Dave is too tired for this year right now. <laughs> 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 oh God. We should have called we should have called the podcast that that would have been really funny. Well, that would have been very ethics, ethics, and empathy. Empathy. ethics and empathy. That would have been super <laughs> oh, that would have been so good. <laughs> Oh, I'm good. It's, it's not that, too late. We get Paul to do it. We got Paul to do a rebrand now. That can be there. We do a rebrand. <laughs> Paul, we want a logo. We want it in 15 minutes. Your napkin. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll just do it there while we're talking. I'll just go yeah. on your screen. Um, but I, th- I think people should do it uh, and try to understand it, even if it's their own personal study. I think people put a lot of um, weight on degrees and on you know pieces of paper and diplomas, but like, look, let's be honest, Google Scholar gives you free access to every single thing you've ever needed to read if you're prepared to actually, because, you know, academic papers are quite heavy to read. You know, they're, they're quite a heavy thing to read. So, but if you're prepared to genuinely learn about something, it's all out there. And as I said, psychology is more of a 
personal interest and even before the bias in the I studied UX and UI even when I was back in kind of first degree back in visual communications I just I just loved understanding how people think because I think people are insane and I just love the way the fact that you have two people looking at the exact same thing and they think it's completely different and it just makes no sense and I love to understand why that is but I think having a, like empathy and ethics are, are things that you should kind of have when you go into you know almost any job but i think specifically in marketing it's just that the issue is if you're too empathetic or too ethical you're not probably going to get that far in marketing to be honest with you if, if you're prepared if you're not prepared to kind of sell stuff to people that they don't I think really I've heard, want I've heard the, the line before the marketers have no morals yeah but i mean it, like it is built like ultimately if you're in marketing your number one priority is to your shareholder out in society Mm-hmm. And when your whole job is, if we're talking about the cultural thing as a psychological, psychological thing is about manipulating people to make certain choices. Now, that being said, there are a lot of well publicized brands out there that have ethicized their brand and in doing so but, have done very well. For yeah, themselves. but in that, like they're coming out saying that they're, you know, they're practically peace warriors now at this stage. But the thing is, they're doing that to win the crowd over. So if that, and they're just doing the same thing in a different way. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. Yeah. What well, doing. yeah, but I mean, would you rather someone did something did something good and got rewarded for it, even though it may not have been their main motive, or just did bad things well, and also got rewarded? I have no for problem anyway. with doing, doing, doing good things for the wrong yeah, reasons. I have no problem with them yeah, doing exactly. the good yeah, yeah. things. I have no problem with them doing the good things. But the thing is, they, they don't wrap it up in well, bubble wrap and things. Have it every way. <laughs> It's going to be a lie somewhere, Dave. We just have to learn yeah, where to where it is. And as, and as well as that too, there is an element of like with like like I, like again, marketing being the root of all evil. I'll buy that argument one hundred percent every day of the week. <laughs> but I would also say that at times we do over egg it a small bit. Like there are some companies doing incredible damage. We always rant about Facebook, Instagram, so on and so forth. Um, and there's been loads over the links, for example, it has not been good for women, for example. Yeah. Um. But there's other ones, like you mentioned Converse earlier on. I was kind of like, well, I buy Converse because Converse were kind of the cool brand when I was a kid. I don't think there's anything really wrong with that, you know? Like if everyone was just... No, I, 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 that, that's anything, what I was saying. There's the nothing thing, wrong you know? with it. And I, as far as I'm aware, I've never looked into them as a company. I do love their logos and, you know, their look and their style, but I've never looked into them as a, co- as a company. I do follow them on Instagram and they're quite, you know free wills and stuff as in there's, there's they've never done anything bad i don't think they've ever been in the the newspapers for doing something horribly wrong so i have nothing against the company that was more of a case of like i put my own emotional status on this brand and that's why i mean and i, th- and I think that's okay in a lot yeah. of cases that's actually okay and people don't people automatically say that like marketing as a concept is the root of all evil but i would say that there are certain things that people say that's bad because it's marketing rather than actually drilling yeah. down into why it is yeah. bad yeah. you know what i mean yeah and like you're not going to exist today without marketing anyway as in you like i think people also say that like as you say marketing the concept of is the root of all evil yeah but marketing is also just saying we're open today and putting it on facebook do you know what i mean as in like it it can be as simple as that as in like a shop saying they're open where the local you know the local coffee shop down the road is open today come to us instead of starbucks technically that's marketing and technically they're trying to put the starbucks out of business if you read into it but at the same time they're not actually hurting anybody like so it's it is the root of all evil if you get onto the you know culturally charged you know trying to change the world to suit them kind of era but mm-hmm. not many companies actually have that power yeah i wonder has there been ever we probably should know this there has there been a study done on like the percent, some movie or something the percent, that you watch, is there? could have been could have been a fight <laughs> some some company called fight club where i got done by the cognitive <laughs> But I got done by the cognitive bias and I walked in and got a large popcorn. <laughs> but, the, um, but is there like, John, the same way that like there's a very, very small number of companies or countries and companies that contribute to X amount, like massive percentage mm-hmm. global warm, warming. Yeah. If you went back in history, is there actually a very, very small either subset of industry or certain brands that have done an overt amount of damage than other brands, shall we say, and yet all of marketing gets demonized for it. That's interesting. I'll read that up later on. There you go. There's your next research topic now. I get one of them every week. Myself, <laughs> myself and Paul will uh, co-write it with you. That's yeah. grand. You can write it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you mentioned there, uh, you've mentioned Converse, you've mentioned um, Nike, about the kind of brands that you follow. 
like what if people talk to you you know about brands that you kind of not idolize but you know ones that you kind of have a go to and obviously look everyone goes towards the big ones you know because they're easy and you know we all follow them but is there any that you really enjoy the content or the what they stand for the brand or is there any just to kind of pop out to you to be honest no i actually try not to follow a lot of them like i'll, I'll do research right, that answers necessary. that right that's the end of the show what did you want him to say yeah. velo velo was it oh yeah it's really yeah, yeah, good stuff i follow all of it but i like, know, you know a room for our sponsors but here's, here's, here's the thing is and this is probably a thing that you probably know like is in i follow velo because velo is it velo velo depends whatever he's on because you do it and i know you do it and it's I, it's almost a support thing for you because i don't drink coffee it's like why the fuck would i follow it oh yeah you're a team man yeah you? i'm a team yeah. I, I never drink coffee i don't can't stand the taste of it but i do know that it is a big thing and i i, I follow them to support you that's and a lot of the things i follow Feeling on social media are uh-huh. feeling the love <laughs> you know see marketers can be nice too you know like we, we have tech somewhere. we're buried in there but we have them somewhere but like i follow i i try um, very purposely to make my social media because I social media is if you said it so many times it's it's awful place like to exist horrible it's, it's horrible it. to stay you know positive and okay with yourself when you're scrolling through all these perfect brilliant people on, on Instagram and all this kind of stuff so what I tried to do is I tried to follow artists or I tried to follow creative people, kind of yeah people. creatives and I tried to follow things that are not not like, fucking don't even start me on inspirational quote stuff but stuff that I find like positive or i find code reinforcing code or something. of the day yeah, yeah. <laughs> i feel like i'm gonna start doing to you i'm gonna start texting you quotes of the day just to fucking piss you off <laughs> and at least by way of getting something off you a bit of work <laughs> that's that's a, like i i actually i and i even don't follow big companies on purpose like i don't i have a hatred for apple i think i hate them with every bone in my body i think they're terrible it's something in my head that you're an apple user Oh, that's I thought was. That's that's offensive. Offensive. and I thought we were friends, but there you go. Look, I, 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 I think if you'll if you'll follow, go on Twitter, you will have lost the follow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't stand them. I think they're terrible. I think everything they do is is terrible. I think everything they do is a lie. I think every every bit of their core that they've got famous for in the nineties and two thousands is is the opposite of what they do now. Um, mm. I used to be an Apple user. I used to have iPhone, iMac, MacBook Pro, whatever. Knew it. <laughs> But uh, I stopped that when I was, I'd say, before the Masters anyway. They, oh, before right, I knew okay. you. So, okay. um, when you became older and wiser and more aware of... It's, it's when I just started understanding them, basically. And I understood the technology they put into it is fucking worse than the technology you put into a 200 quid Nokia. So, Dave, what phone do you use? Apple. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, but I fall into the category of, like, fucking I easy. hate technology in general. <laughs> I want to eliminate it from my life as much as possible, and therefore Apple suits me down to the ground. I just love when you come out with statements like that, and then Why? like because you're a digital marketing. Lecturer. I need to understand just because I'm just because I'm. Um, if you're if you're a, a lecture uh, law, it doesn't mean you need to love the law. You just need to understand it. True. I suppose. Yeah, that's yeah, a fair point. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go back over here and watch fucking Club. <laughs> well, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, really enjoyed that. Um, that was good crap. We go for pints soon, right? Yeah, I think yeah, we, we should. Yeah. yeah, we need to. We should go for pints. We should yeah. meet up for a pint and describe how our job is shit and we hate everybody. And we'll drink from Heineken or, or one of those. Other. <laughs> yeah, one of those guys who's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Need, or, they need or, the money. Or, yeah. or, or, or we'll be hipster and we'll drink like a Mamoretti who are owned by. Owned by yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hop House. Oh, they're, we're just giving plugs they're to beer gone now, aren't they? Hop gone. They're gone from the UK. They pulled us because the UK. We're in Ireland. The UK consumer said it was shit. We're in Ireland. Yeah, I know, but they but pulled Didn't Rockstar just take over that, though? Rockshore is bad. Like, yeah, Rockshore. Really really which like, one? Rockshore, Rockshore, Heineken, aren't they? They're well, owned by. They're owned by one of the companies, though. I can't remember. Anyway, are Rockshore owned by a company? But that's. Fucking no, I didn't say. It. I said they're owned by Heineken. Anyway, <laughs> all, <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> this was a much better podcast than last week. Last week was a fucking shambles. This was much better. <laughs> it went a bit off the rails last yeah, week. Alright. <laughs> all if you know anyone who's looking great. for a new producer role, send them our way. I could do it, but I just don't shut up enough to to let you talk. That's great. We give you a trial. Six months. Just, trial, I'll right? just keep interrupting you, tell you to shut the fuck up and we find something. Actually, our, our BBC <laughs> rules will go out the window. I'd say. That's all right. That's all right. Paul, thanks very much. Take care. Cheers. Later, Bye. Appreciate it. Have a good